I'm starting with the isomalt base. And for this, I'm melting isomalt granules with a little bit of water in the microwave. And I'm doing this in 30 second increments and stirring each time just enough to make sure that the granules completely dissolve into the liquid. This is a little silicone pot I bought from Michaels and it gets really hot. So you really should be wearing gloves. I was waiting for my gloves to arrive, so be extra careful if you're not using gloves, but I definitely recommend it. Once the isomalt mixture is smooth, I added just a little bit of black food coloring to it and thoroughly mixed it in. For the base, I'm using this cylinder silicon baking mold. I think it's actually for cookie shot glasses. I found this at Michael's and I'm pouring quite a bit of the isomalt mixture in for the base. And I would say it's coming up maybe two thirds of the way to the top. I also wanted to make a little ring handle, so I'm following the same steps, but I'm pouring just about a fourth or maybe even a little bit less up the side of the cylinder for the ring handle. I gave these a while to dry, I think between maybe 30 minutes and an hour, and I could feel on the outer side of the mold when it cooled down. So once you're comfortable and know that it's cool, carefully pull these cylinder is out of the mold and it did take me a few minutes to get this out without breaking, especially the little ring. Now that my base is done, I can determine what size of cookie I need to cut out with my circle cutters. So I wanted the cookie to go all the way to the bottom of the base for better stability. So I'm testing out two sizes to see what'll work best. I'm baking just one small circle of each size. And then once I figured out the size I wanted, I went ahead and baked, I believe, 12. For the top part of the candle, I rolled out the same size circle that I have for the rest of the candlestick, and then I used the circle cutter that was smaller than this size to take out the inside and leave me with a really thin ring for the cookie. And I made two of these. Once all my pieces were baked and cooled, I started stacking them into the isomalt base. So I put a little bit of royal icing around the edge of the first one, um, that's the base of my cookie. Does not matter what color it is because you're not gonna see it anyway. And then I continued to stack the circle cookies just using royal icing between each layer. And this was pretty thick royal icing. You don't want it to be too, um, too runny or too much of a flood consistency so that they can really adhere together well. For the actual candle and the wax, I had an old tea light that I used the same circle cutter size to cut the wax out and made sure the wick stayed. And I'm gonna use that at the very top of my cookie. As I'm stacking, I'm also taking a look from the sides and just making sure my cookies are as lined up and straight as possible. I laid the first small ring cookie on top with some royal icing. 
And then I wrap my candle piece in a little bit of aluminum foil just to make sure that no wax melted out into my cookie. And once I fit it in there, I topped it with the last ring cookie. I let the royal icing firm up for about 15 to 20 minutes before I moved on to the next step. So next I have some Swiss meringue buttercream that I'm adding some Americolor Super Red to. And I'm going to mix that in thoroughly. And with a small offset spatula, I'm going to start frosting my cookie. And I'm frosting this like I would a cake, going as evenly as possible, and then I'm going to use my scraper to smooth out the sides. Pop it into the fridge to firm up the icing, and then repeat the steps to get a nice, thick, smooth coat of buttercream. To adhere the ring holder, I'm just warming up the base of the candle with my kitchen torch and I'm placing the ring right against it. I am holding it in place for a few seconds just to make sure it sticks. Next, I am making my isomalt bones and my little skulls. So I'm following the same process I made early in the video, heating up isomalt granules with some water in 30 second increments and then adding my food coloring to it once it's been dissolved. My pieces were pretty small, so it didn't take long for them to firm up. So once they were completely firm, I popped them out and then I made more, as many as I needed to really go around the base of my candle. Now I am adding some color to them. So I have the Sugar Art Gold, this is Super Gold, and then I'm gonna go on top of it with Elite Brown to kind of antique these up a little bit. I also use some white dust from the Sugar Art around the base of the candle because I wanted it to really contrast with the bones. So this just was a nice way to make this look a little bit old, but also not all the same color as the bones in the little skulls. To glue the pieces on, I used my kitchen torch and warmed up the back of the bones and I stuck them right onto the base of the candle. And same for my two skull halves. I heated the back of one, I stuck them together, and then just warmed up the ring of the candle holder and I stuck the little skull right inside. The last step was to make a drip. So I warmed up some heavy cream and melted some white chocolate in and then used a little bit of the super red Americolor um, gel paste again 
and made my drip and just dripped it down like I would any other cake. So you might want to do a few rounds of this. I made a drip, I let it firm up, and then I put another drip on top just to really give it a, a candle-like appearance. And now the moment of truth. Is it gonna light? Will it light? Of course it's gonna light. What am I, an amateur? Yes, yes, that's exactly what I am, but it did light nonetheless. If you found this tutorial interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing and liking the video and sticking around for more fun. Oh, and how was the taste you ask? It was to die for.